All right, welcome back. So now we are going to add this user that we just typed in. We're gonna add it to our page. So first of all, we have in here a form with all these inputs and we have a button with a type of submit. We want to create in here a new event, which is gonna be on submit. So basically this event of on submit means that whenever you press that button down here of submit, you are gonna submit all these values and do something. So let's see what we can do now. We're gonna create in here a function called submit form like that. So let's create this form. So let's go in here, let's do const submit form. All right, so now this is gonna be the same thing in here. This function, we are not going to return anything. So let's specify it as void, all right? And then inside of it, we're gonna have in here another different kind of event. And the event that we wanna have in here for when you are submitting a form, it's a react.synthetic event. That's the one. So whenever you submit a form and you want to get access to the event that you have in there, this event in here is going to be with a type of React synthetic event. And now, as you know, when you submit a form, you basically, you're going to submit this form to another page or to this page itself, and you're going to reload the page. So if we do that, we're going to lose our state and everything that we have in here. So we want to prevent that. Whenever we submit this form, we want to do a event. And as you can see, look, the first time that I did E dot is even giving me up all the different sorts of options that I can do with this kind of event. So I'm going to put in here the dot prevent default. I'm just doing this so we prevent the page to reload itself. You can try it if you want. So now that we got this, what I want to do is in here on the top, do you guys remember when we had this user state with a current user inside? I want this state right now to have what? To have a current user, but also to have in here a all users. And these all users that we're gonna have in here is gonna be an array because is gonna have lots of these users inside. So it's gonna be an array with many of these users. As you can see, now we are having some, some errors in here telling us that, look, we said that our user state in here, look, we specify the type. We said, okay, our user state is gonna be an object with a value of current user and then each one of these current users is gonna be with a type of an user interface, which is this stuff, name, string, h string, and so on. All right, so we are missing our all users. So I could go in here now and put, for example, our all users and so on, but this is getting too long now. I think it's better for us to actually create another interface, this time for our user state. Okay, I think that's a better idea. So let's do that. Let's go in here and do a um, interface because we want to create this for an object, basically. And we're gonna call this all users int, like short just for interface. Um, I think I, I missed something up here. So this, when you are creating an interface, you don't actually need to pass these um, commas, you just need to pass these semicolons. So when you create an interface, it's not like really like an object. So you can just do name, string, age, string, and so on without having to pass the commas. So we are creating this interface for this user state. So basically what our user state has in there, we have a current user, so let's put that in here. What is the type of this current user? We already said, okay, the type of this current user is this object that we have in here, all right? So let's put that. This is an user interface like we did up here, okay? 
So for this one, we are all good. Okay, what's the next value that we have inside of our user state? We have a all users. So let's grab that. Let's put it in here. And now, <coughs> sorry, because we have in here an array, okay, we need to specify in here like this. Array. And so this is the way that you can tell TypeScript that this value that you have in here is an array. You say, this is an array. And now with these less than and greater than sign, this kind of crocodile braces, you need to say, okay, what kind of array is it? What kind of things are you gonna put inside of this object? The things that I'm gonna put inside of this object, they are gonna be objects like these ones. It's gonna be objects with names, age, and jobs, because there's gonna be like multiple users that you're gonna put inside. Okay, so if what we're gonna put inside of this array is gonna be all this stuff like name, age, and object, like for example, we're gonna put like multiple ones of these objects like this, okay? Each one of these objects, they have the shape, they have this interface. So we're gonna say, okay, these all users that we got in here is gonna be an array. And inside of the array, what we're gonna have is these objects with this user interface, okay? So we are all good in here. So now that we got this interface ready for our user state, when we are specifying in here our use state, let's just delete everything that is inside of here because it was taking too much space. And now inside of this use state, what is the shape of this use state? What kind of types we should have in there? This one, all users interface. Let's just pass it in here. And look, everything is working fine now. So we are gonna say, look, our use state, user state, the value that we're gonna pass into the use state is gonna be a all users interface. So it means that this is gonna be an object with a current user. Look, it's the current user here. The shape of this current user, the type of this current user is gonna be a user interface. Look, with a name of string, age, that's it. This is what you have. And then we also have a all users, which is an array. At the moment is empty, but it doesn't matter. So we say it's an array and whatever is inside of this array is, is gonna be this kind of user interfaces. It's gonna be objects like this. Okay, we got this already. So now look, TypeScript is even telling us some errors in here, look. Because from our previous function, the onChangeHandler, when we were updating the state, look, we are saying that, okay, let's update the state with only current user, but now we have this one in here, the all users. So what we can do is, okay, from our user state, instead of only passing this, let's bring the spread operator, users, state and now what we want to bring from our user state is going to be the uh what else the oh yeah we just want to bring this we just want to bring this the user state so basically when you say let's bring the user state it means that we're going to bring all of this this is what the spread operator does we're going to copy all of this and then, okay, we are going to overwrite this current user with this new value. So basically, doing this, you copy all of this in here. So we already have this value in there. And then we are just like replacing this old one with this one, okay? So we are all good in here. Now, on our submit form, what did we want it to do? So let me just see, we got our submit form and we want to update our state. So set user state. We want to, first of all, do a current user. So in the current user, what I'm gonna do is like, when I'm gonna add a new user, I want our values that we have in our inputs to be reset. So I'm gonna do name empty like this. I'm gonna do an age empty as well. And I'm gonna do a job empty 
like this. So we reset all the values from the current user, basically, so the, the input is all gone. And then we're gonna update our all users. So this is an array. And now what we are gonna have in an array, because we could be adding multiple users, you always want to do a spread operator of the users state, oops, users state dot all users. So this means that if for some reason you added already multiple users, you wanna bring all the users that they are inside of this array already. So that's what we are doing with the spread operator. And then you can add your new one, users state dot current user. So user state dot current user. So you're gonna grab all of them that they were there in before, and then you're gonna add your new one. Okay, so I believe that we are all good right now. Let me just delete this. So I'm gonna do in here console.log of the user state to see if this is actually working, all right? So let's refresh the page. I'm gonna put in here Telmo. I'm gonna put in here uh, 32. I'm gonna put in here, for example, this is gonna be a software developer. And now I'm gonna press add user, okay? So this is our uh, console that we got. We got our all users and look at that. Inside of our all users, we got this user, just a one with the name of Telmo, age 32, job, name, and so on. Okay, so now this is all good. Let's just put this in here inside of our, um, of our page so we can see that's value. So we can do that quickly. We can do this by creating this variable. Let's just go in here. Const all users is gonna be equals to our user state dot all users. And then we're gonna do a dot map. All right, and so basically a dot map function in JavaScript will allow you to loop through an array and then do whatever you need to do with it. Okay, so we're gonna do in here a function with the first value is gonna be the user that you are gonna loop through. This is gonna be the value of your array. And the second one is gonna be the index of it. Okay, so this dot map function has access to this index, which is gonna be the first time you run the loop, the index is zero, the second time is one, and so on. And the user is gonna represent the object that every time you are looping through in the array. Okay, so we need to do in here, um, actually, look, you would have to do something like this. This is how the dot map is working. So you need to have a return like this, uh, and then pass whatever you want inside. But instead of having this function with these curly braces, like that, I'm just gonna replace them like this with these normal parentheses. So when you have these kind of parentheses, it means that we're gonna return whatever is inside in here. So you don't have to have that keyword of return. So whatever I want to return in here right now is just gonna be, for example, a div, this is just like quickly to do something. For example, an H2 uh, is gonna have the user dot name. So, because, you know, this is gonna represent these values. Uh, so we got the name, age, and job. So let's do that. Where was it? Where was it? Here. So username, I'm gonna do, like, copy these over. So username, user age, and user job, all right? So we got all of these. Let's pass in here a key, okay? So this is just React wants you to pass a unique key to each one of these elements whenever you are creating them. Um, and that's it. So let's use this variable of all users and let's just pass it under our form. So I'm just gonna put it in here. Need to put this in between curly braces. All right, let's see if this is working. Let's just refresh the page. Let's go in here, Telmo, I'm gonna put 23. 
um, I'm gonna put in here that is a pilot and let's press add user. There it is, Telmo, this one and this one. Okay, so we are all good in here. Let's just try it again. Let's say David. Uh, so David is gonna be 35 and is gonna be a software developer. I'm gonna press add. And as you can see, we are adding each one of them in here. All right, so yeah, we are all good in here. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, in the next one, we are just gonna learn how we can actually click in here in each one of these um, elements and just like delete them. So if you wanna delete each one of these users. All right, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.